I was eight years old, you know, I just went to the um, uh, rice field and then I just uh, digging for bamboo shoes and then hit with the UXO and then export it. A clearance team scans a field for UXO or unexploded ordnance and unearths several items. They're mostly small cluster munitions or bombies, but also a couple of mortars. This is not a remote area in Laos. It's on the edge of a village where cattle graze and children play and people grow rice and vegetables or wood if they didn't fear it could cost them their limbs, livelihoods and even their lives. This man lost his leg in 2014 after hitting a bombie while planting crops. He's being fitted with a prosthetic limb at a rehabilitation center in the Lao capital, taking steps to rebuild his life. His injury is a legacy of a secret and relentless American bombing campaign that aimed to stop Vietnamese communist guerrillas from moving supplies and troops through Laos during the Vietnam War. Laos has the tragic distinction of being the most heavily bombed country in history based on its population size. U.S. forces made more than half a million bombing runs and dropped more than two million tons of munitions on the country between 1964 and 1973. It's the anti-personnel cluster munitions that have caused the most lingering harm. U.S. bombing scattered 270 million of them randomly across fields and forests and villages. Some 30 percent never exploded. This man is still suffering nine years after his fateful encounter with a bomby. <laughs> Previous prosthetics caused him pain and left him with an infection. He's set to have an operation and then he hopes get a better fitting prosthetic. For UXO survivors, the psychological wounds can be as damaging as the physical ones. This impoverished farmer's family thought they had struck it lucky in 2014 when they found a metallic object in a field. They tried to sell it to Vietnamese scrap metal dealers who came to the village. เวียดนามซื้อแล้วเวียดว่ามีขี้เมียงแล้วเขาแล้วเคาะขี้เมียงกันออกแล้วเราจะเป็นผู้ไปขายเฮ้อผู้น้อยเขาก็นั่งอย
after a fellow UXO survivor killed himself because he couldn't get the help he needed. Toomey founded the Quality of Life Association. The organization provides educational funding and livelihood training and teaches handicraft making skills to families of UXO victims. All of the UXO survivors and they have traumatic experience and then they have kind of, you know, a psychosocial you know, issues like this. And of course, and this is part of the difficulty, you know, um, you know, try to help them. And if we have someone who have the same situation come to talk, that would be, you know, better. Helping survivors is only one side of the challenge UXO poses. The other is to survey and clear the land to prevent more tragedies. UXO is in everywhere in this country. We have altogether and 18 provinces. Uh, obviously, UXO in, in 17 provinces contaminated, you know. Lots of the agriculture land contaminated by UXO. People, it's a fear to use the land. Land battles as Laos fought for independence from France and the civil struggle between the Patet Lao and Royal Lao forces have contributed to a huge amount of large bombs, artillery shells, mortars, rockets, grenades and landmines that still lie unexploded in this country's soil. Government agency UXO Lao and four international organizations, including the UK-based Mines Advisory Group, are working to clear the land of unexploded ordnance. MAG has cleared 20 million square meters and destroyed 115,000 items over the past eight years. If it is in a village and, and the item is safe to move, we will move it. If it's in an open area such as this, you know, why, why, why is there a need to move it? Um, you know, we can, we can destroy it there and then um, rather than putting any added risk into, into any situation. 98% of MAG staff are locals. More than a quarter of them are women, including this all-woman team. Over the past two decades, the people of Laos have taken full charge of managing the UXO problem. They've honed their skills at clearing bombs, rehabilitating victims and manufacturing prosthetic limbs. This non-profit group called COPE helps UXO survivors get back on their feet, literally. Before the project started, local people, when they have apotheosis, or accident, and they try to, you know, be survive or moving around. They made their like homemade prosthetic, like made from bamboo or wood. When they come to our center and they receive a new prosthetic that we provide, and then they also uh, donate their own prosthetic legs. The threat of UXO has had a profound economic impact in a country where most people are subsistence farmers, and nearly a quarter live in poverty. It, it makes a huge difference whether you can work on a land that you know is safe, as we would know in other places, or whether you have to work on a piece of land as a, a farmer and know that if you have too heavy equipment, you put yourself at risk. You put yourself at risk anyways, but then you put it even more if you use you know, equipment that would help your farming to be more productive, your agriculture to be more uh, performing. In this country, there are 96 districts. Consider that uh, 47 districts are poor, in which uh, 41 districts um, suffer from UXO contamination. Obviously, uh, we see that uh, UXO is a high correlation to the poverty of, 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 the, of the people in this country. The ever-present danger of UXO 
also hampers the development of roads and tourism. This area is known as the Plain of Jars, comprising dozens of megalithic archaeological sites dating back at least 2,000 years. It was also one of the most heavily bombed areas of Laos. The first of these sites was cleared of unexploded ordnance about a decade ago, making them safe for tourists to visit, but many other sites remain heavily contaminated. Despite the United States' lead role in Laos's half-century of suffering, people here welcomed President Barack Obama's visit in September 2016 and his promise to do more to finally rid the country of UXO. Although they've developed wide-ranging expertise, the Lao government and local NGOs say they still need international funding to assist victims and find and clear the bombs. To put the new American funding into perspective, the U.S. has pledged $90 million for UXO surveying and clearance over three years, having spent $100 million over the previous two decades. Today, Laos is leading the fight to ban the production and use of cluster bombs. When I was a teenager, I lost my older brother because of the cluster. I know how hard is it, you know. So that's why I, I ask the, uh, the country that um, produce and use, please stop it. Please stop it and please destroy it. Don't use anymore. No need want this, uh, uh, how to say, horrible uh, weapons in, in, in this world. And uh, we also have been kind of... Uh... While some survivors like Toomey have forged ahead with their lives, others are just starting to put the pieces back together. Laos still has millions of cluster munitions and other unexploded perils in its soil. And with or without U.S. funding, it's likely to take decades before people here can plant their gardens, plow their fields, or let their children play free from fear. For Assignment Asia, I'm Ryan Meltzer in Siang Kuang, Laos.